Chaitanya Clark looked into this. You wake up each morning and go about your day not expecting something bad to happen to you. You hope, some of us pray, others just don't even think about it. But sometimes, it just happens. On September 15th, mom, was the day my MRI was scheduled. We don't know why. You start wondering what you've done to have caused you bad karma. <laughs> At least that's what I was thinking. I felt like God gave up on me and I lost much of my faith. When I got there, he came in to the office and he said, so we have bad news. Truth is, Bob Marley said it first, but you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. Hello, my name is Shatani Clark and at the age of 25, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. My emotions were high. I was afraid, but I was also afraid of being afraid. I was angry and sad and even a tad bit relieved. But I finally knew what was wrong. <laughs> and some of you may say, Shatania, you should be grateful they caught it when they did because others probably won't have that chance. And I would say to you, <laughs> you're probably right. But I'd also add, don't take away from the experience that I have and how much this affects me and those who care about me. So how are you feeling? Um, how am I feeling? Mm -hmm. um, staying positive. Everything is gonna be fine. It's gonna be okay. Um, you're gonna be fine. I love you. I love you more. For anybody out there, if you have somebody who went through a major surgery like I have, Many people, you know, think, you know, they want to be alone. Um, they don't want to be bothered. And maybe some people are like that. For me, I struggled with feeling as though I didn't have anyone. Truth is, those who truly know me are probably familiar with the Shatania who does everything alone. The independent girl. Some may even say prideful. Who struggles with asking for help. Or the Shatania who tries to fight her battles alone because why would I want to drag everyone in the depressing stuff I gotta deal with? But if I'm being honest, this was a fight, and though I wanted to, I wasn't prepared to fight alone. I think I'm still going through the motions of trying to be as normal as possible without accepting that something this huge has happened to me at the age of 25. I pride myself on being a go-getter, a hard worker. So not being able to work or not being able to do certain things by myself or realizing that my legs are weaker than they generally are or I can't walk for long distances or my chest is paining um, because of either anxiety or who knows what. It's kind of a tough pill to swallow. Um, but I'm dealing with it in my own way, I guess. I went through a phase of just being depressed, feeling like I don't know myself, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to be myself when recovery is over. And those of you who don't understand might think that this sounds crazy. Like, it doesn't make sense, but the truth is, I battled with my identity quite a bit. I wondered a lot if I really knew who Shatanya Natasha Clark was. Recovery is something else. It's not just about, you know, your scar healing. It's about you as a person realizing that, like, this is what I just went through. And what many don't realize is having a brain tumor, doing a craniotomy is no walk in the park emotionally nor physically. I remember breaking down just in tears because I didn't recognize myself. I didn't, I felt embarrassed, I felt weak, I felt sick. I felt like when you looked at me, you saw a sick person. I even have moments where I questioned everything in my life. Could I have done better in certain areas? Were my mood swings as a result of this? The way I handle past romantic relationships, could that personality have been from the tumor? Would things have been different had it not been there? And that sounds strange to say, but that's how I felt. And I remember just crying so much that my parents 
put me back in the car and was just like, let's go home. And for a quick second, I was like, I want to go home. Like, I don't want to be out here. But then I braved up <laughs> and we went to IHOP and we ate. But it just different things. Like, this process really messed with me on so many levels, you know, physically and emotionally. But I think the emotional toll that it has had on me has been the scariest part for me because even now I still have moments and I'm still dealing with it um, that I'm just like, why me? And sometimes it sounds selfish to say that because, you know, other people go through way, way worse things. But for me, this was my, my line sister, Emma, told me recently, like, this is your worst case scenario. And it was, this was my worst case scenario. Thank God I obviously made it through, the tumor was removed and I made it through recovery in different ways. Um, obviously, there are different things that I'm not able to talk about in this big video that I'm gonna make, you know, small videos and break it down a little bit more. And you can ask questions so we can talk about it. Right now, I've been back at work for about ooh, five months now. I came back to work in December after my 26th birthday. Um, and I have been here and I've had headaches. You know, I'm still working on that. I got a new doctor and we're working through that. Um, but the biggest thing I'm dealing with now is apparently my neurosurgeon, obviously before he passed and before my surgery told my parents I would not need chemotherapy and radiation. Unfortunately, that is not the case. My most recent MRI <laughs> has shown that there is a residual tumor. Chemotherapy and radiation is supposed to prevent that from developing in something bigger, but also the tumor that I did have that I cannot pronounce its name. I know it's a, it's a mixed with neoplasm um, and I'm, I don't want to try to pronounce the name because I'm not going to get it right, but I will write it somewhere <laughs> so you can see it. Um, it will absolutely grow back. That's the point I'm making. It's going to absolutely come back in the exact same location. And the goal is, according to my oncologists, both of them, <laughs> is to ensure that that doesn't happen. So still working out the kinks with my parents to try to figure out if we want to do it or not like i absolutely want to do it my father is not on board to do it my mother wants to do it so we're trying to figure out the right way to do it it will be six weeks of chemotherapy and radiation and then a four week break um, another mri and then chemotherapy through iv treatment for six treatments so one every three weeks for six treatments so that is where i'm at in this crazy journey. Like many people have been thinking, oh, she did the surgery and that's it. That's what I thought. I thought that after the surgery, the most thing, the, the thing I'll be dealing with most is, you know, getting back my weight off. Like even now, like I gained so much weight that I lost some and there's still lingering weight here from that. I thought that's what I'll be focusing on and my emotional, my, my, my emotional and spiritual health. Like I was like, I need to get counseling. I thought that's what I'd be working, working on. And it's so hard for me to focus on those things when, you know, <laughs> They're telling me you got to do chemo and radiation, especially when you think about it. That's just me, time away again, going through, you know, the ins and outs of that. So I can break this down and answer specific questions if there are about this entire process. And if somebody was asked me what's the biggest lesson I've learned through this whole thing, it will probably be to trust yourself, trust your instincts, trust your body, ask hard questions. Um, yeah and second opinions second opinions are absolutely necessary and i've learned that um, right now i always contact my friend in florida's dad for a second opinions like i'll send him a message and be like hey ask your dad what he thinks about this and he does it um because for me it's just like i have learned my lesson i'm not quite sure what's the best way <laughs> to end this first video but what i want to say is that i want to thank everyone who supported me throughout this entire journey. Um, and then for those of you who did not know that I was going through that, thank you for, you know, listening and, and you know, and any questions you're gonna ask, like I'm open to answering them. I'm at a point where like I can talk freely about this um, because it's still happening and it's something that, you know, I had no choice but to accept and I have accepted it. So um, I don't really have much to say right now, except I'm truly grateful for everyone. Um, I can't think of everybody's name right now uh, to, to call my mom, my dad, my brothers in Cayman, my stepmom, um, my grandma, my aunt, and, um, of course, Sashoy, Michelle, Brandon, of course, um, 
yeah, just everyone that was there for me, Kenya. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I did not thank all my wine sisters who supported, who called, who sent beautiful flowers and a card. I love y'all and I truly appreciate y'all. Um, so this entire thing, I truly, truly, truly appreciate And of course, all my colleagues, <laughs> colleagues came out of the woodworks <laughs> that I didn't even know knew who I was and supported me. So truly grateful for that. So if there's anything I can say is like, I'm very grateful for the people in my life. I'm very grateful for being alive. And even though this process seems never ending, um, the lessons, the lessons that I'm learning make it all worthwhile to a degree. <laughs>
So the things in my life I can control, I will do everything in my power to make decisions I feel best impact me and my life. (laughs) Well, please, I want to keep this conversation going. I want to hear your stories. While this has been therapeutic for me, the truth is I want to be able to help someone even if that meant I had to be vulnerable. So let's talk about it. Thanks for tuning in.